Let's look at example, or not example, problem 42 in the questions and problems in the practice textbook. Okay, so let's just read it. It says, a 25 kilogram child, let me see, no, a 25 kilogram child at the center of a playground, merry-go-round, let me just, uh, I just want to get this, um, a picture. So just hold on one second for me, will you? I'm just going to bring in a picture here. Okay, there we, we go. We have now a picture that we can work with. I just got this off the internet. It's not in the textbook, okay? So a 25 kilogram child starts at the center of a playground merry-go-round that has a radius of 2 meters and a rotational inertia. So I of the playground merry-go-round is... 500 okay uh, let's make this thinner and and then this child starts there but then walks out to the edge okay so state one state two if the merry-go-round has a rotational speed of 0.2 inverse seconds when she is at the center, what is its rotational speed when she is at the edge? Okay? Alright, so what is the idea here? The idea is that if you have something rotating, we've, we've gone over this multiple times in these videos, if you've got an object rotating, it has a certain angular momentum. Okay? And as long as there's no external torque, as long as there's no external torque, your angular momentum is, your, the delta angular momentum is constant. It is, does not change. Now, how do these external torques, what do they, how do they look? What do they look like? Well, it is if an uh, external force is tangent and it is causing an acceleration in the tangential direction it's changing the the velocity okay it's changing the speed so if you identify an external force that is tangent then we know that the angular momentum will change so the question is uh, so what what are the examples that we've seen so far well the one that I've spoken about multiple times now is if somebody is diving off of a off of a uh, a diving board, they dive like this, okay? That's that's their shape, and they and they have a certain angular momentum, okay, and a certain uh, an, uh, rotational velocity, okay. But then at some point they curl up into a ball. And, uh, and so they change the distribution of the, their inertia. They were quite widely distributed over there. And then they curled up into a ball. And what happens when they curled up into a ball? Their, their rotational velocity increased. But what we saw was there was no external torque applied to them. Because gravity, the only force being applied to them is gravity. And gravity acts on the center of mass. Okay? It acts on the center of mass. So there's no, there's, there's no force that's causing the angular momentum to change. So the angular momentum is constant. It's constant. Alright? Well, in the same way here... We had the child at the center of this object, and so it had a certain distribution of inertia over here. And then at the, sec at the second part, the child moved to the outside. So the, the inertia, the distribution of the inertia changed. But the question is this, was there any, is there any external uh, torque? Is there any external torque? The answer is no. This child is not applying an external torque to the, 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 the merry-go-round. The only force that, that's being applied 
is, um, is, is a friction force that is acting towards the center. Okay? There's no tangential force um, on, on this child. Okay? Or rather, there's no force that the child is tangentially exerting on this, on this uh, play, on this merry-go-round. Okay? It's, it's not external. Should I rather say that it's not external? The child is internal. Anything that the child does to the, to the merry-go-round, the merry-go-round does to the child. So it's internal. Okay. All right. I think I've, I've gone on enough about that. So the point is that the... Um, not that. The angular momentum at 1, at state 1, is equal to the angular momentum at state 2 or position 2 or whatever. Okay? So what is this angular momentum? Let's consider the angular momentum. It is equal to um, it is equal to the angular momentum of the disk. Okay, so the angular momentum uh, of the of the playground, merry-go-round, plus the angular momentum of the child. So what is this equal to? This is equal to, it's given, um, it's I omega, right? Okay, so I playground omega playground plus mr squared of the child. Now, why do I use mr squared? Because what we do is if we look from the top, let's look from the top, and there's your axis of rotation. We can consider the child to be if she's right next to that axis of rotation, we consider the child to be a particle. And so for a particle, it's mr squared. Um, and this has to be multiplied also by omega p, because both, both of them are rotating at the same rotational velocity. Okay? I hope that makes sense. So, but the question is, what is the radius of this child to there? If that radius is so small, say it's like even point, uh, say it's point, uh, point zero two meters, okay? Uh, I mean, it's probably very small. Then what happens is this rotational inertia is basically zero. So we have this now. We have the initial... Uh, rotation of the of the, the merry-go-round times the 500 which is from from this so this this entire thing on this becomes zero basically that becomes zero and this was point 0.2 times 500 so the point is that <coughs> the angular momentum of the child is negligible Negligible. How do you spell that? Negligible? Oh dear. Sorry about that. I think that's how you spell it. Negligible. So we can ignore it. So the initial uh, angular momentum is equal to 1,000. No. 100 kilogram meter squared per second. And now this is the point. This remains constant as the person moves to the outside this remains constant so now as this child is on the outside okay now she's here and her her uh, rotational inertia of the child is still m r squared but now r is what it's given by 2 meters given by 2 meters squared okay so if I just want to go over this again so this this is now 100 so I'm going to put 100 on the left and on the right we are going to have we're going to have the inertia again of the uh, merry-go-round times its uh, speed and this is this is the speed now that we're looking for 
plus the inertia of the child times its rotational uh, velocity, which is what we're looking for. So if we, if we bring this out, we can say that this is now 500 plus 25 times 2 squared. That's 100. So the final rotational velocity is then equal to 100 divided by 500 plus 25 times 4, which I get 0.16 inverse seconds. And does this make sense? It makes sense to me because when, when you've got more mass at the center, uh, your velocity, your rotational velocity should be higher. If your mass moves out, outward, then your rotational velocity goes down. So it is changed from 0.2 inverse seconds to 0.16 inverse seconds. Okay. Uh, shoot me an email if, you, uh, if this is helping you, if it's not helping you, if these videos are helping you. Give me some feedback.